To completely define a system, one must precisely specify the behavioral model, detailing the functional and control flows. The Genesis Simulator, an automatically generated dynamic verification simulator, can help identify flaws early in the development cycle, thereby reducing overall project cost. This video is a brief orientation to simulation in Genesis. For more complete information, reference the Genesis Simulation User Guide. As we get started, it's important to understand exactly what is being simulated. The complete definition of the behavior model as represented in your behavioral views. Only classes that represent the transformation or handling of objects or data can be simulated. This includes function, program activity, test activity, and operational activity. Remember that in Genesis, all behavior views are rendered based upon data in the underlying model. From that perspective, one could say that you can simulate any behavior view. While that is true, the EFFBD is the most complete behavior view when it comes to information used in simulation. If you generally model from a different view, be sure to check back at your EFFBD from time to time for reference. To open the simulator window, first select the entity you want to simulate. Then select the simulator button from the ribbon. This is the simulator display window. Only one of these windows per entity can be open at a time. Multiple simulator display windows can be open, as long as they are on different entities. The middle of this window, the timeline, is blank right now, because we haven't run a simulation yet. Let's do that. Click the Run icon. Once a simulation completes, the timeline is populated with data. A depth of options and information are now available. Scale control will allow you to adjust the scale of the timeline. Time indicates the duration of the simulation. In the left side pane, we can see a list of entities as they are encountered during execution. These include behavior being performed, resources that are utilized, triggering items, and links. You can control which entity classes are shown through a collection of commands on the ribbon. On the right side, we see the timeline that details when each function was performed. For functions, this details when each function was performed and how long it took to perform. For resources, items, and links, it tells the number of each available. When viewing the timeline, you will see different colored bars. For more information on what these colors mean, reference the Simulation User Guide. You can save a completed timeline as a graphical file outside of Genesis using the Save Timeline button on the ribbon. The transcript window logs the events as they occur with a host of information about each event, including a timestamp. The transcript can be saved as a CSV file for use in different tools using the Save Transcript button on the ribbon. This provides a basis for understanding the detailed execution of the behavior model. To run the simulation again, click the Reset button, then Run. Let's switch to another entity and view its simulation. If the simulation cannot complete due to some error in the underlying model, you will be alerted that blocked events prevented further execution of the model. Notice the blocked events table at the bottom of the window. You'll want to spend time examining what this table is telling you. Common possibilities of model errors are if a function fails to receive its trigger or doesn't have enough resources. You can also slow down execution into individual steps by using the Step button to walk through each step of the simulation at a time. 